Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to Quick Break Games, and today we're going to be talking about Funko Fusion because there's some new information about the game that I wanted to share. So there were probably around 10 or so different gaming outlets that actually got to see a demo of Funko Fusion played by design director Arthur Parsons. And these news outlets were not able to record any of the gameplay or play the game themselves, but they did talk about what they saw. So a lot of these different uh, gaming outlets put out articles about all this footage that they saw back when the reveal trailer was released on April 30th, uh, but I was completely unaware of most of these. So today we're going to check out these articles and see what new information that we can gather about the game because I don't see a lot of this being talked about. So in general, what all these articles are going to talk about is the demo that they saw, which showed off levels for John Carpenter's The Thing and Shaun of the Dead. So the first article we're going to look at is Game Informer, and all of these articles are going to be linked down below in the description under the Sources section so that you can read all these in full yourself. So for this first article, during the gameplay for The Thing, you play as Kurt Russell's McCready, which we've obviously seen a lot of in the marketing for this game. The Thing is by far the franchise that they've been promoting the most uh, for Funko Fusion. So let's get into this. So it says Parsons playing as Kurt Russell's McCready fights off some Norwegians using the game's third person shooting mechanics. According to Parsons, all characters have melee and ranged options, though they had to get creative for some characters. While He-Man uses his signature sword, OJ uh, from Jordan Peele's Nope swings around a miniature version of one of the inflatable tube men from his movie. Parsons dispatches enemies easily, which I imagine is due to the game's relatively low difficulty, his experience working on it as a developer, and the fact that every enemy has an outrageously large head, ideal for headshots. Yeah, it does seem like the game would be a little bit easy uh, with the whole large heads of all the different character models. So that is good information that we got there, that all characters will have melee and ranged attacks. But, you know, that does make me a little bit worried that all characters might play the same if they all have, you know, the same melee and ranged attacks, but hopefully they feel a little bit different with the different items that they use for each of those different types of attacks. So let's get back into the article. So it says each IP will include playable characters and many will include levels, though the scope of each level will vary by the franchise. Uh, so that's interesting. So it seems like some franchises will only have playable characters and they won't include levels. It says many will include levels, not all. So that's another possible uh, bad sign there, but it says some, like The Thing, will get a proper full-sized level, while others exist as a secret cameo level players can unlock in other worlds. So this cameo level term is something that you're going to see kind of throughout all of these different articles. So it says, poking around the frozen outpost in this demo, Parsons travels through a portal to reach a world based on Shaun of the Dead, where he has to escort a car of civilians to the safety of the Winchester. While there, he transforms into He-Man and shows off the zombie's enemies, which turn the hero into a zombified version of himself. Even though it's just a cameo level, it's much larger than I initially expected, likely packing plenty of easter eggs in for fans of the movie. So there you go right there, that confirms that you will be able to mix and match characters, so you know you can bring in He-Man into Shaun of the Dead, or you could bring in, you know, uh, Marty McFly into John Carpenter's The Thing, so that's going to be very cool to see throughout the game. Continuing on, it says players can move through these levels in whatever order they want to progress through the game's main story. Parson explains that this modular approach allows them to continue to support the game after launch by easily adding new characters and levels into the mix. The first instance of this is with the game's pre-order bonus, which of course is the Walking Dead stuff, we've talked about that before. So now let's move on to the NME article, I've never heard of this website, but again it'll be linked in the description and they have some more interesting details about the game. One funny mistake that they made in this article is that they call Kurt Russell, Russell Crowe. They kind of got the uh, actors confused there. But anyway, this article goes into some of the gameplay that we're going to be doing in the John Carpenter's The Thing level. Uh, it says, while McCready is capable of rescuing huskies, battling soldiers, and finding gas tanks to power the research base, The Thing's cannon is launched out of the window when Back to the Future's Marty McFly turns up to shatter glass with his electric guitar. So, so to me, it seems like these different franchises are actually going to be coming into these different worlds as part of the story. Like, it's not going to be just a free play thing. Like, during The Thing level... Marty McFly is actually going to show up uh, with his electric guitar, so I'm not sure if that's implying just a free play, a non-canon event in the story, or if this is actually part of the main story that he shows up in the thing's uh, level, so we'll have to wait and see on that. Uh, but it does give us some gameplay details there that you're going to be rescuing the huskies there, uh, of course battling soldiers, and finding the gas tanks. Uh, so we saw some of the gas tanks in the gameplay that they released a week or so ago, which I made a video on, but it seems those are actually going to be part of the main story objectives as well to power the research base. They're not just used as, you know, an explosive weapon against the thing. So then the article moves on talks more about the Shaun of the Dead portion of the demo. 
It says there's more depth to the combat than we were expecting. Unlike US Outpost 31's baddies, zombies can give chase after being dismembered and you'll become infected if you take too many hits. Amusingly, Parsons points out that if you're infected by the Thing's shape-shifting parasite before coming to Crouch End, the zombies will sense you infected and ignore you. So, very interesting how you can start out within the Thing's level, uh, get infected, and then travel into another franchise, and that kind of infection status will carry with you, and the zombies will ignore you. So, definitely a cool feature there. Alright, next up we're going to move on to Game Rant's article, and this one actually probably has the most information of all the articles, so let's go ahead and get into it. So it says here, the set dressings of Funko Fusion have destructible elements with vinyl to collect and use as currency. So currency was actually something that I wanted to see in this game, like studs. So it seems like there will be vinyl to collect, which will act as the game's currency. So vinyl could possibly be the new studs in Funko Fusion. And it says players can switch between various characters from within a given IP or even bring in outside characters into new worlds, which we've already talked about. And different abilities unlocked within these worlds will help puzzle solving and progression. Continuing on, it says it seems as though the setup of Funko Fusion will feature players completing key sequences from the respective properties in order to complete their story. At first, that will involve using the major players from the IP, but bringing in outsiders and can also unlock new areas or collectibles. So that's kind of how I was seeing how this game would be set up. It's sort of like how in the LEGO games you have story mode and free play mode. So each franchise, you kind of play through the story mode first with the you know actual characters from that specific IP. And then after that, you can kind of do free play mode where you can bring in characters from other IP and access new areas or collectibles. Uh, but again, from the last article from NME, that seems to imply that maybe Marty McFly shows up as part of the main story within the thing. Again, that's totally not clear if, uh, you know, the outside characters are part of the story or if it's more just a free play thing. Alright, let's get back into the Game Rant article. It says, During the demo, Arthur Parsons was paired with only a single 1010 Games dev for co-op, but Funko Fusion can support up to four total players through online cooperative play. Online co-op was always something that most of the LEGO games were missing, so to see it in Funko Fusion is exciting. So yeah, that is really cool that there is going to be four-player online play, but this comes at the cost of something, which I'm going to be talking about when we get into one of the later articles in this video. But anyway, next up is a really cool thing that they got to see is it says the preview included the briefest look at the character select screen. That's always a really important screen in the Lego game. So Funko Fusion is going to have a big character select screen as well. And it says it had the various Funko versions of the characters in their signature pop boxes on a sort of virtual display. Uh, so very cool that the character selection screen is going to have them all in their actual box. So it looks like the actual box that you would see on the shelf of a real store. It says, Parsons explained that some of the characters will be available right from the beginning, while others will require some extra effort to unlock. There are also secret versions of characters to unlock as well, like an undead He-Man that unlocks if you let him get attacked by a zombie while in the Shaun of the Dead world. Uh, so yeah, this sounds kind of similar to the LEGO games where, uh, you know, characters will be unlocked from the beginning and then you locked more later on. But uh, we never quite saw anything like this where there's like specific things, like optional things that you can do in levels that unlock characters, like, you know, letting yourself get turned into a zombie in the Shaun of the Dead level that unlocks uh, the zombified He-Man character. So, kind of interesting way to unlock characters there. And it's also really cool that we're getting different variations of characters like we saw in the LEGO games. Let's continue on this article, it says, Players will have the freedom to jump into any world in any order after an initial onboarding process, but it sounds like there will be a narrative through line to push players towards a conclusion. So, definitely seems like there's going to be kind of an intro level, then you're pretty much going to be able to play any of these 20 different franchises within any order that you want, so that's really cool. This article also goes into the vinyl currency system that we were talking about earlier. It says one example shown was using collected vinyls to purchase an amp from Scott Pilgrim vs. The World to clear out an obstacle and unlock a hidden area. So it definitely seems like there's going to be some sort of a store or shop and you can even purchase items with your vinyl from other franchises to use in a different franchise, so very cool. And this Game Rant article also goes into the Funko soda bottles that are in the game. It says the Funko soda bottles that players can buy for buffs and health replenishment or the objective in the Thang level that required McCready to find and free six huskies. So interesting that uh, I guess the Funko soda bottles will act as like hearts in the LEGO games to heal you, but it sounds like you're going to have to give the huskies in the Thang level some of this Funko soda to bring them back to health. 
Then one last thing I want to talk about in this article is that Parsons did confirm plans for both free and paid DLC, but one has to imagine there are so many properties that didn't slash won't make the cut for this first game, but could be included in a future game. So there you go. There's going to be free and paid DLC. Not sure what would be free, you know, what would be paid. Maybe some characters might be free, but if they add, you know, substantial levels that would be paid. Not totally sure, but uh, there you go. DLC once again confirmed by Arthur Parsons. So that's it for Game Rant, let's move on to Games Hub. This article just had one small thing I want to mention here with this quote from Arthur Parsons. He says, you'll see that there are cool portions of the game where a character will actually change and transition midway through a level. The same happens with Prince Adam when he transforms into He-Man and other things like that. But really, we didn't want to take away any focus from the Funkos themselves and their respective stages. So there you go, it confirms that the Funko Pop models can actually change mid-level, like Prince Adam changing into He-Man, so that's always a fun addition. Then the last article I want to bring up is from CG Mag Online. Again, another website I'm not familiar with, but they did drop some very important news for the game. Uh, so in this article, it says Funko Fusion is a third-person action-adventure game that can be played as one player or up to four players online. And look at this in parentheses, local multiplayer is not available. So yeah, this is uh, pretty bad news in my opinion. You know, personally... I probably wouldn't use the split screen feature, but I know this is a big feature for a lot of people. The LEGO games have always had, you know, local split screen or local couch co-op since the very beginning with LEGO Star Wars, the video game in 05. You know, TT Games, these developers that are working on this game now at 1010 Games, they pretty much invented, you know, the drop-in, drop-out co-op system. So, to me, it is pretty disappointing that they're not including local multiplayer in this game. Seems like split screen is just kind of dying on these uh, the, over the last five, ten years on these most recent consoles, uh, and Funko Fusion is definitely not helping with that. So, you know that is cool that it's online, but you know if you are playing locally with somebody else, you're gonna have to have them have their own console and their own TV set up in the same house, which is just kind of ridiculous. So, to me, they really should have supported at least two-player split screen. That would have gone a long way. But hey, maybe they can add it in in a future update. Then the rest of this article mostly talks about things that we've already discussed, but there is this one spot I want to mention here talking about the lack of voice acting in the game. Arthur Parsons also pointed out that you will hear authentic soundtrack to the movies and TV shows in Funko Fusion with remastered tracks and original scores peppered in. So there you go. Although there won't be voice acting, there will be the original soundtracks with remastered tracks as well in the game from all of these different franchises, so that is really cool to hear. So guys, that's going to wrap up this video, so lots of good information from all of these articles. Uh, again, the big news here is that local multiplayer is not going to be in the game, at least not at launch. So let me know your thoughts on that. You know, do you still play split screen, or maybe you haven't played split screen in a while, so maybe you don't care about this too much. Uh, I really think it should be an option in the game. I think, uh, especially with how much of it was a staple for the LEGO games, and the LEGO games could never really get online co-op for most of them, so now we kind of have the opposite situation where we have online, but no local co-op. But there was a lot of good stuff in this article as well. You know, we found out that the game's going to have vinyl currency. So where you can buy upgrades. The game's going to have Funko soda bottles for health and used for different objectives. Uh, you're going to be able to play kind of free play in each of the worlds with any character you want. So a lot of good information here. DLC, free and paid, is confirmed. Just a lot of awesome stuff coming for Funko Fusion. So guys, be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Dislike it if not. Subscribe for more content on Funko Fusion. And I'll see you guys next time here on Quick Brick Games.